Well, good morning. I want to welcome you to Morning Meditations. Peter Salmon, our lead pastor here at Trinity, and uh, we're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 5 today. So you can go ahead and turn there as you're joining us, 1 Peter chapter 5. I want to welcome you. And I'm excited to look into this and see what are Peter's final words to us in this chapter. And uh, he talks about some things that aren't very popular anymore. Um, Things like humility, things like submission to authority. And so we're going to dig into that a little bit. And how does that fit? How does that work in our life today? So just go ahead and comment. I see a bunch of people are jumping on right now. Comment to let me know you're watching. Uh, I'd love to say hi to you this morning. And uh, as you know, we'll pray towards the end of our time together. So feel free to drop a prayer request as well. We would love to um, just pray for anything specific that you have on your heart and um, so I have a little bit of an announcement here at the beginning Uh, many of you know that our church is going to start gathering together again in person in um, about three weeks and so I'm excited a lot of people are excited uh, about that and um, because of that kind of as we're preparing and moving towards that um, this is actually going to be our last day of morning meditations. So um, we're going to continue to do some online video content. We're going to take a couple weeks and kind of reevaluate and um, kind of look at some different things we could be doing. And um, so we're going to continue to engage in some of these different formats. Um, But we really loved morning meditations. I've loved it personally just to share Um, just been so encouraging to connect with so many of you, um, especially, you know, a lot of you that have come on every single morning. And uh, that's just been an encouragement for me to see your faithfulness. It's been an encouragement to be able to get into God's Word myself and to study and um, to learn myself, but then to hear what God's doing in your lives as well. And so... um, Thanks, thanks, Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen said that these have been a big boost for her, and that's that's encouraging to hear that. Um, and so maybe just a, a good a good way to kind of open up this morning would be just to share what's been something fa- uh, that's been helpful for you about morning meditations. What what are you kind of thankful for about the last couple months that we've had? I think we've done uh, over sixty videos. I want to say because um, I think it's been about 12, 12 or thirteen. Week. So we've had about 60 of these uh, live streams, which is um, pretty amazing looking back. And uh, But yeah, as we transition to more in-person things as a church, we're going to be transitioning away from this format. But you can be looking for um, more content on our YouTube uh, channel and Facebook page in the months to come. We're going to, uh, I think one of the great things we've discovered during this season is just Um, how much we can begin using um, digital video more than we ever have before. And so um, we're going to continue to do this. All right, again, uh, drop a prayer request. We'd love to pray for you. And uh, feel free to share something you've enjoyed as well about morning meditations. I'm going to read 1 Peter chapter 5 for us, and then we'll jump into some study. I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and witness to the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory about to be revealed. Shepherds, uh, or shepherd God's flock among you, not overseeing out of compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not out of greed for money, but eagerly, not lording it over these entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. In the same way, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another, because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on him, because he cares about you. Be sober-minded, be alert, Your adversary the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him, firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. 
The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered for a little while. To him be dominion forever. Amen. Through Salvanus, a fellow, a faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly in order to encourage you and testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. So this is a, kind of his final greeting to the uh, churches he's writing to, and uh, he gives a lot of different statements, a lot of different encouragements, what we would call exhortations, right? And I kind of want to boil them down into three main exhortations. And I think we're going to see, it's going to be very interesting as we look at some of these things, how much it they, they pattern Peter's own lived experience as he walked with Jesus, right? You know, you think of Peter's uh, life and some of the different stories, and we're going to see some of those things reflected in his exhortations to this church. So um, Peter Peter learned a thing or two along the way, and uh, and he shared that with them here. So first, his first encouragement is to be faithful, uh, to be faithful, and this is particularly directed towards the leaders, towards the shepherds of this uh, church of these flocks, and this word uh, shepherd is. Uh, the word that we uh, have get get the word pastor from, right? So um, it's it's that function of care of oversight uh, of God's flock. He says, shepherd God's flock. And you know, there's there's a consistent kind of theme of addressing that particular office. There's a certain office of oversight and shepherding and eldership that kind of is addressed in many different places in the New Testament. And this is this is one of them. And I think it's important that he is addressing leaders, first of all, because he talks about leaders setting the example. But in a moment, he's also going to talk about submitting to the authority of leaders. Um, and so he addresses, first of all, the character of these leaders, that it's so important um, for these leaders to be faithful. And he points out some different stumbling blocks here, some different potential pitfalls. Uh, a leader can have a wrong motivation. Um, they can oversee out of uh, compulsion, but not willingly, as God would have you. Uh, so there needs to be a willingness and an eagerness to serve. There needs to be a free choice to take up that responsibility and not in a kind of an obligatory um uh, motive, and it's it's not something that should be uh, gone into out of social pressure. You know, not somebody shouldn't become a pastor or come into that role in church leadership just because it's what everybody thinks they should be doing. Um, elders should serve out of a love for God, and so Peter called them to to make God's will their own, basically. Um, that, that they should please God in their work. Um, and, you know, they're, uh, I, don't, I don't know that I want to say a whole lot about the state of churches today, um, but there can be some burnout. Um, there can be uh, some, some difficulty in, in continuing on in that motivation of love for God. But it's so important that we, we do ministry out of the right motivation. It's so important that we're filled to overflowing and to, to, that our, our leadership and our ministry comes out of an overflow to others. Um, so, second thing, wrong goals. Uh, you can have a wrong motivation, but then as a leader you can have wrong goals. So, he talks about being greedy for money. Um, so there needs to be a desire to serve. You know, in, in those days, even, pastors uh, received, I don't know if it was a salary or how they were paid, but there was some sort of um, compensation. You know, he talks about don't muzzle 
the ox while they tread their grain. That's in another part of the Bible. And so there is that picture that it was normal for people that are helping lead in the church, preaching the gospel, to um, receive that kind of support. But then there's that temptation to be greedy. Um, and not that, you know, it's because pastors have uh, a, a ridiculously high salaries or anything like that. That's typically not the case. But um, the temptation to be greedy can be because um, there is access potentially to finances, um, that there's a need to be trustworthy with money. And Peter saw this up close and personal in his time with Jesus. You know, Judas, right, was the one that uh, kept the treasury for the disciples, and they all knew that, you know, Judas was greedy. And uh, they knew the pitfalls of this. Um, I know of a church who, uh, <laughs> this is a church somewhere else in Iowa, not in our community, just to be very clear. Um, but this this pastor encouraged the people to give uh, cash only. Um, because he used the scripture of, you know, you don't want your right hand to know what your left hand is doing when you give. And so you don't want to, like, uh, have that sh money show up in your bank account so that what if your your banker sees that you give to the church you know you don't want that money showing up on an irs statement um, because you don't want to you know show how generous you are to the irs and uh and so he uh just used that verse to say you should only give cash and um and by the way he was the one that would take the cash and and count it and uh, so there's a lot of greed that can seep in and uh, take over again those those motivations and goals but then there's also wrong methods he talks about don't lord it over those entrusted to you uh, be an example to the flock so elders uh, pastors lead by example they should be the ones setting the example and not um, just kind of be a forcefully domineering uh, uh, upon their flock because authority can be abused as well just like money can be abused um, authority can be abused. And so Jesus is, is very, or uh, Jesus, but Peter as well, is very direct to his leaders. If they're going to be in these positions, um, they need to have integrity. Um, and then the second exhortation he gives, so first, be faithful. The second one is to be humble. So in verse 5, he talks about those who are young sub being subject to the elders. And they're not really sure whether it's talking about age here, whether it's talking about just um, everyone who's in the church be subject to church leaders. But there's a kind of submission that's being encouraged here, and this uh, seems pretty old-fashioned in a way. I mean, we, we like our freedom and our independence in this country. And, um, and again, maybe this is because authority is so easily abuse that we like the idea of not having to be under any authority. But when there's godly authority, that, that can be a beautiful thing to submit to. You, I mean, you have to have leadership or else there's chaos. On a football team, you have to have one person calling the plays. The coach has to be in charge of calling the plays. If all the players get into the huddle and they all try to start saying what the play should be and they all want to run a different play and they get to the line of scrimmage and everybody's doing something different, it's going to be chaos. They're never going to win. They're never going to take ground. And so um, there has to be leadership, but is that leadership, um, that godly kind of leadership, first of all, that Paul talks about, or Peter talks about, and then um, are those in the church submitting to that leadership? Uh, but it's more than just submitting to church leaders here. Next, Paul talks about uh, humbling yourself to one another. Clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Um, so the word here for humble yourself is actually um, a word that is reminiscent of a worker that puts an apron on. Um, so clothing yourself with humility means to like put on this apron, getting ready 
to work and serve each other. And that is another vivid example from Jesus' life and Jesus' ministry. When Peter was with Jesus in that upper room, Jesus um, got down and washed the disciples' feet. And to be clothed with humility means to have that spirit of a servant. Jesus said, just like I serve you, you're to serve one another also. And so having that humble servant, a spirit of being able to serve each other, is uh, a key to unity within the church, to harmony within the church. And so how are we doing on that right now? You know, in our culture, in our culture, how humble are people towards one another? Uh, how humble are our opinions on social media, for example? Uh, how humble are we and willing to hear and understand people that have different viewpoints? How willing are we to serve the people around us? Um, God resists arrogant, self-seeking persons, but gives grace to the humble. This is actually Proverbs um, 3.34 that he's quoting as well. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And this is our part. This is something God's calling us to do. He's not uh, saying, uh, wait for yourself to be humbled. He's saying, humble yourself. Um, and so there's some work of, of um, repentance and um, some, some heart things that we have to square with our Savior in order to, to live out this picture within the church of unity and humility. Um, there's a horizontal element, right, to humbling ourselves, but then there's that vertical element to humbling ourselves before God. And then, I, I love this part, verse 7, Casting all your cares upon him because he cares about you. Um, understanding that we have a God who isn't just powerful as we humble ourselves before him, but understanding that we have a God who actually loves us as we humble ourselves before him and he wants what's best for us. And so we can give him our concerns and our cares. And for this church, they were suffering. And so they certainly had um, concerns that, you know, um, we can relate to a lot, maybe not in the sense of persecution, but just in the sense of going through difficult things. It's been a difficult season the last few months. And so um, being able to come to God and humble ourselves before him and present those cares and requests to him is, um, again, a beautiful thing. All right, so last, uh, last exhortation he gives them is be watchful. So we have be faithful, um, we have be humble, and then be watchful. So Peter says, um, the, the devil is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for anyone he can devour. Be watchful, be sober-minded, be alert. And who better than Peter, right, to talk about this? The one who was told by Jesus, hey, you are going to deny me three times. Uh, before the cock crows, you are going to deny me. And yet Peter apparently wasn't alert. He wasn't watchful, and he still denied Christ, and he fell to that temptation of the devil. And so he's passionate about this topic and has some pretty deep experience with this topic. And, you know, we don't talk a lot about the devil. We don't talk a lot about Satan today. Um, when I say we, I mean Christians in general, I mean the church in general, and maybe, maybe because it makes us sound a bit out there, um, but Satan is very prominent in uh, Scripture. The devil is mentioned a lot in Scripture as our adversary. Um, he accuses us before God. He uh, comes to either deceive us or to devour us. Um, the Bible says he's a liar. Uh, he's a murderer. So... What can we do to overcome and defeat the plans and schemes of the enemy? Well, he gives a few things here. He says, first, be alert, right? Don't let your guard down. Put on the armor of God. Uh, it says resist. So there is a unity that we need to have in standing against the plans and schemes of the devil. And... 
Uh, he says, believe, be firm in the faith, trust that there's victory in Christ. So um, be alert, resist the devil, be firm in the faith, and um, then he says, remember, basically, uh, remember that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. Remember that you're not going through this alone, that others have been able to overcome this as well. And if, if the enemy can get us to be singled out, if the enemy can get us to be isolated, then um, it's a little easier to devour us. I think of the, the image of a lion, right, that's preying on a herd of antelope, let's just say. And the lion, actually, lions sleep a lot, but part of why they sleep is because they want to be so still and so quiet that an antelope will separate from the herd a bit and get a little too far away from the herd. You know, these antelopes are just out grazing and one gets a little bit too separated from the rest and forgets that there's a sleepy lion over there. They're not being alert. And all of a sudden the lion will pounce when that antelope gets separated. And so uh, remembering that we have brothers and sisters that have experienced what we have experienced, um, being able to resist and stand with one another, um, being able to stand firm with each other, um, being able to encourage each other to be alert. Um, this, this kind of community and relationship is designed within the body of Christ, within the church, for us to be able to better stand against the schemes of the enemy. And so uh, I know that that is, that has been a challenge to be in community the last few months. And um, I, I hope Morning Meditations has been an encouragement for you in that, um, in having brothers and sisters that you're connecting with on a daily basis um, over a Facebook Live. Um, but as we go forward, as you know, everybody's going to have kind of a, a different level of comfortability with gathering in person. Um, and, but even so, that, that doesn't mean that we can't reach out in a lot of different ways. That doesn't mean that we can't still be unified. It doesn't mean we can't make phone calls. It doesn't mean that we can't um, write letters and encourage each other in, in a lot of different ways. And so um, one, of my, one of my encouragements to all of you as, we, uh, as I announced at the beginning, for those who didn't hear, this is going to be our last day of morning meditations. We're going to kind of take a couple weeks as we're transitioning to more in-person events as a church and we're going to reevaluate. We're going to continue to do digital content because we want to continue to encourage you. We think it's very been very effective and we want to continue to, to do that. Um, but my encouragement to you would be don't be isolated. Don't be isolated. Just because this is our last morning of morning meditations, um, there's, there's no reason to be alone. So the final encouragement he gives here, just want to point out, he talks in verse 10 about the God of all grace, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, and strengthen and support you after you have suffered a little while. This was one of my verses for a while during COVID. This is actually one of my kids' uh, memory verses in their Treehouse Kids curriculum. Um, they, uh, so, uh, you know, it was so appropriate, right, that, that after we have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace will restore, establish, strengthen, and support you. And so just know that these admonishments and encouragements that Peter's giving, he's doing them in the context of saying, hey, you have a God of all grace, a God who is able to encourage you, who's able to restore you, who's able to strengthen you. He is able to help you live out these things. Um, so I hope this is an encouragement to you today that we have a God that's full of grace um, that can help us to, to live out this picture of what it means to be the church uh, together. I want to just uh, share a couple things here that you guys have shared um, about morning meditation. Cindy says these have been an inspiration. Thank you for joining us. Cindy Breezy says I've been uh, impressed and encouraged by the effort to stay connected and to adjust to new formats. Um, thank you for sharing that. Faruka says, I've uh, been thankful to be in fellowship and be with Trinity, uh, our Trinity family during this pandemic. Uh, 
Brian says, I've enjoyed seeing and talking to people that don't have the chance of catching up with often. I've connected with many of you, uh, with many more of you during this than before. Um, that's ironic, right? Uh, Deb said, morning meditation has been a different way and a great beginning to my days uh, during these times. Even we introverts are looking for a connection. Thank you all so much. Mary says, morning meditations helped me get my mind with God uh, before I went off to work. I could dwell on these meditations as I experienced some difficult and scary times during this season. Thank you. Deb says, my 88-year-old in-laws have been following Trinity's online messages. Uh, that's incredible. We're hearing a lot of stories like that um, just over the past few months of people that have connected with us um, from all over the country. Fran, uh, as well, Fran from Illinois. She says, so blessed by your morning meditations, lifting Trinity in prayer as you all move towards in-person gathering. Um, well, let's take some time to pray together. And I do want to thank, uh, just real quick, I want to thank Brian. Brian's on here. Brian's been, man, he's he's been our rock star kind of digital engagement specialist over the last few months. I came to him. He was two months into his residency, and I said, uh, Brian, you were doing a bunch of this stuff but now we need you to jump over and, and jump totally into digital everything and just help us over the, uh, during the pandemic. So he just jumped in with a total willingness. And uh, let's give it up for Brian. Thank you, bud, um, for, for all your investment. And, and all the others, too. Jeremy, Tony, Trent, uh, Kaylin even jumped in yesterday for the first time. So just thankful for everyone that um, helped to facilitate here as well. Well, God, we thank you for this group. Uh, just thank you for the faithful, um, just your faithful disciples that have been gathering uh, today and other days as well, just to spend some time in your in your word and prayer to devote their day to you, to uh, devote their hearts and minds to you every day. And so just thank you for this really special, unique opportunity that we um, never would have had if it wasn't for <laughs> coronavirus. So um, we can even find uh, thankfulness even in really hard things, even in, even in the midst of uh, suffering and, and pain and evil. So God, we, uh, we thank you for the times that we've had. We thank you for um, how you're at work in our lives and in our church and how you are binding us together in humility towards one another, in humility before you. We thank you for how you are um, bringing us together to help support each other and help each other stand firm. And we thank you that your grace is at work in the midst of all of it. And so, uh, God, I pray just as we go forward, I pray that none of us would um, be isolated. I pray that we would continue to be encouraged in your word and encouraged in fellowship, um, whatever that looks like for each of us, God. And so again, God, we, uh, we just come before you humbly. We thank you for your word. Thank you for the privilege of um, just gathering together like this. And uh, I pray your blessing on each person as they go from here. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much. God bless you all, and uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you all soon.